this presentation is about reactive programming in Java. It's a topic that I started to work and learn about one year ago. And I will talk about Arix Java, Spring Web Flux, Area Socket, R2.c, and Project Reactor. So, who am I? Oh, I forgot to translate this. I am Camila Santos, I am a backend developer at TM Digital. Uh, so I am community manager at Willmakers Code, Perifa Code, and Dev Java Girls. Just one minute. I, uh, I think I shared the correct presentation. One minute. <laughs> Sorry. This is the Portuguese version. <laughs> Uma versão for português e uma versão for inglês. <laughs> yes. So, one minute. Let me close my cam. No worries. Well, well, just while we're waiting, then Camilla, let me know when you're ready to go. But is there anyone out there? I know it always um, have a very long, awkward silence after I ask a question like this, um, but is there anybody out there that might consider giving a lightning talk on Friday? Anyone? Could you tell us a bit more about it? Because I've never heard of it. I don't know much about it. Oh, yeah, of course. So we, um, we run lightning talk sessions every second Friday. Um, so they are uh, talks that are pretty much open to anyone, ideally Java related, but we have all sorts of other things, learning related, uh, mentoring, that kind of thing. Some people talking about um, getting started speaking and, and their experiences and that kind of thing. Um, but the idea is really just a sort of, just a chance to, um, to, to get into speaking, to give it a go if you, if you haven't, or maybe if you've given talks internally at your own company, then just to kind of shift gears a little bit and do it in front of people that, that you're not quite as comfortable with. Um, and yeah, so it's 12.30, we start on, on Fridays and we typically have five, four or five talks. Um, and then there's often a Q and A um, with an experienced speaker, like I see Jim Goff in the audience this evening. And um, so someone like that will come along and just talk about their experiences with speaking. So yeah. Any takers? Do you think it might be something of interest? There's that long awkward silence that I'm I'm, I'm used to. I'm familiar <laughs> with, with these ones. If if you think about it, if you think you might be open to it, then um, let me know. Talk afterwards. It's really light and uh, intended to be a bit of fun and and uh, yeah, just something to to get started with. Uh, um, yeah, it's nothing kind of, and everyone there's really supportive. So yeah. I know we've probably got a few people that have that have done it. Andrea, you've given a couple now. Yeah, sure, up so far, and it's great. It's a it's a it's a perfect way to start. If you have something that you like, would you like to share? If you want to start with public speaking, but you are a bit nervous, afraid, it's the best environment to start. And it's only only five minutes. So when when you see it's gone, so it's really good for people, especially for people who are starting. So there you go. Let me know. Let me know. Um, yeah, you can follow up on, on that link. But we're all set. Camilla, we're all good. OK. Lovely. All right. Perfect. All right. Enjoy, everyone. I'm sorry. This is the incorrect version for the presentation. And now is the correct version in English. And let's talk about first about reactive paradigm. Reactive paradigm is a programming paradigm oriented to event flows. Or just um, close here. Okay. Uh, oriented to data and then flows, as well as their propagation asynchronous. And the reactive paragraph, because it works asynchronous, it's highly recommended to handle a large volumes of data that undergo major changes in the real time. And it is also widely used in social networks for front and back ends because it works oriented to user actions that result in events and mailing and use cases about um, social networks and streaming services. 
Reactive manifest is the basis of reactive programming and reactive strings and other reactive topics that has four principles that say that reactive application uh, must to be responsive, resilient, message driven and elastic. Responsive says that the system responds in a timely manner if possible. Resilience and the system remains responsive to failures. And the last, the system remains responsive in the face of a variable workloads. Message driving and reactive applications rely on a synchronous message to establish a boundary between components, ensuring flexible coping, isolation, and transparency. Arix Java. RxJava is an implementation for the reactive extensions of JVN, which is an asynchronous and event-based library that works with observable samples. I will detail what is our observables and strings of other concepts um, during the presentation. Um, it stands for the observer patterns that says that each object called a subject has a list of dependents that calls called observers that are automatically notified by the subject to each change of state through its operators and methods. RxJava supports data sequence and events to compose your event strings in a declarative wave. Declarative wave. And RxJava has some operators. One of these is a map. Map transforms items emitted by observable by applying a function to its item. And here we have an example, an observable from letters. You will receive some letters. And you apply the function uppercase. In, uh, you do a subscriber that receives the letters and result and the letters after uppercase. Scan is another operator that applies a function to each item emitted by observable sequentially and emits each successive value. And we also have an example, a nice string, an array of strings that recite some letters. You made an observable from letters that do an scan and generate a new string builder, make an append of this and do the subscriber for this total using this array of letters. This is a use case test and this is a search tool is for JUnit. Other operator is a filter that emits all those items for an observable that pass a predicate. And an example, an observable from numbers that do a filter and make um, a search and do the subscriber of this. And this is also a use case test. Reactive strings is another uh, mainly concept about reactive programming, the base domain also. Reactive strings are uh, initiative to uh, provide a standard guide or rules for a synchronous flow processing with NIO backpressor. NIO in its no blocking input and output. And we uh, have some interfaces and functions. The first is the interface flow sub publisher. That's a method to produce strings and other events. And this is an interface that has the subscriber method. The interface flow subscriber and so met methods for receiving a string and other events. This is an interface with some methods on um, subscribe, on next, on, on error, and on complete. Flow subscription methods for linking publisher and subscriber. And we have just two methods and subscription that is request and cancel. Interface flow processor defines methods to do some advanced operations like transforming items from publisher to subscribe. And we have just uh, no methods. It's a public static interface that extends the subscriber and the publisher. And another is the class submission publisher that implements the flow publisher that is a flexible item producer according to reactive strings. And we also have no methods. Um, the class transform processor that extends from submission publisher and then implements flow processor. Reactive strings intended for runtime environments, also JVN, as well as network protocols, 
like character DBC, um, TCP, UDP, and others. The main objective uh, of reactive streams is to define the exchange of flow data through an asynchronous limit. Reactive streams, its scope is to find a minimal set of methods, interfaces, and protocols that will describe the operations and entities necessary to have asynchronous data flows with NIO backpressor. And now some reactive programming concepts. Um, backpressor is the resistance of constraints that oppose the desired data flow through the software and is a feedback from the receiver to the product that he is not supporting the load. A string is a sequence of the objects that support various methods that can be operated to produce a result using operators. Linked to a source, a string is capable for emitting three events on next, represent some values and make some operations and go to the next value in a list. On error, there uh, represents that run on error in execution. And on complete, that says in case of unfinished events, it indicates that concludes some events. Flex emits uh, from zero to an event, space through on next, on complete, and on error. Here we have some representing of flex. And this is the timeline of a flex from left to right. These are the items issued by a flex. Here we have an operator that indicates the transformation that the operator performs in the flex. And after the result of this transformation and only her on the result. Mono, uh, it can emit from zero to one event, passing through on next and completing on error. It is very um, similar to flex. The difference is that 0 to n and 0 to 1. And also we have the timeline with just one element, one item, item. And we have the operator that indicates the transformation that the operator performs in the model. Observable, that I say here many times about observables. Observable can pass messages asynchronous. A subscriber consumes the data received from the subscription. Publisher produces the data that will be consumed by the subscription. A subscription is a connection between subscriber and the publisher. And publisher produces data, sends the event to the subscriber that consumes the data. Subscriber sends some feedback to publisher. And here we have the back pressure to control this flow of events and strings. Um, a code observable is the sequence of events is only executed if, if your observable has an associated subscriber. And the hot observable is broadcast events regardless of whether there is an associated subscriber. Area socket is another topic of this presentation. Um, area socket is a binary point-to-point -point communication protocol intended for use in distributed applications. Uh, it enables the following symmetric interactions model with a sync message passing over a single connection. The first is request response and the string of one. The second is request string, can finish is uh, a string of many. The third is fight and forget that no response. And the fourth um, channel is a bidirectional strings. Area socket supports resumption of the session that is allows the resumption of long-term flows in different transport connections. R2DBC and the relational database connective, connective brings reactive programming APIs to relational database universe and the based uh, on the reactive stream specifications provides an open specification, works with relational database and, and policy grids, MySQL and others, supports the scalable solutions. And the main topic of this presentation is Spring Web Flex. Spring Web Flex can be defined as a parallel version to the already know we widely use the Spring MVC, the servlet model having as main difference the support for the reactive NIO, non-blocking input and output strings, for supporting the concept of back pressure with the net server common by default embedded in this architecture, but 
if you want to, can use the under towel or other server, but not uh, by default. From version five of Spring Web Flux, we have a reactive part in addition to the servlet structure that already exists. Each model of this is optional. You can use the servlet part, the reactive part, or even both in your applications. And uh, here we have the servlet container, servlet API, Spring MVC, and the request controller in the servlet part of uh, Spring, and the reactive part. And the stack we have Tomcat, Jet, Netty, and Undertone, uh, HTTP, reactive string, Spring Web Flux, and Halter functions. But if you, if you want, you can use both of them in your application. Spring Web Flux was developed because we needed no blocking applications that could work with a small number of threads simultaneously, and that could be run with some hardware resource. In Server 3.1, an NIO API was provided, but its use does not correspond to the rest of the API and to all the concepts behind servlets, which have blocking contracts. These factors were the season for the development of a new API that was used independently of the execution time and in a non-blocking way, which was possible with the servers net, for example, or under town or jet that consolidated themselves in the asynchronous and non-blocking operation. Another reason is that WebFlux make it easier to understand and use concepts of functional and reactive programming with the addition of Java 8 functional features and flowable API reactive strings in Java 9, which enables Spring WebFlux to have functional endpoints and annotation controllers in our applications. And how requests works in Spring, uh, in this model, the servlet model, depending on the volume of request and the way it was developed, it can cause and slow an application and even an out of memory error. If we have many requests and are not optimized the development environment. And this type of error uh, usually occurs when we keep objects uh, for a long time or try to process a lot of data once. And um, in this model, you, recite, you send the request, servlet contact process, this in the thread pool, sends to dispatch servers, that sends to request mapping, that sends to controller, that sends to service, that sends to database, that responds one item at a time. And on WebFlux, we have another form of process requests. And so let me zoom. Uh, you return each data and we send some on next, on next, on next and on completing a uh, error case or on error, uh, on error in a error case or on complete, if it's a finch event and you call the data and returns the data, all of this works a uh, synchronous way and non-blocking way. And here the represent of this, that you send the request to the net and process this in your event loop the reactive strings adapter in reactor project is reactor net sends this to the dispatcher handler that sends to functional endpoints or um, Russian controller also and all of this works in an IO process that returns the data for the user project reactor Reactor is a library based on John Reactive Strings specifications. It is completely non blocking and interactive directly with the functional JVPI string, duration, and completable feature, and other reactive strings that come in Java 9 version. For compose elements using Flux and Mon in microservice architectures, offer backpressure mechanisms uh, right for TCP, UDP, and HTTP, including WebSockets and Eric Sockets. Uh, its operators and shaders can support a leg transfers of volume up to 10 million requests per second, according to reactor documentation. It was also the first reactive library to implement some points suggested by reactive string specification commons, which were later and uh, also implemented by Eric Java 2. Uh, its models are abstract and interoperable reactive flows to facilitate their development and can be used with Spring Frameworks drivers and clients, for example, Cloud Foundry, Java Client, R2DBC, and Socket, for example. 
Hector Core is the main part of this library that uh, other models are dependent on it. It provides a reactive type that implements a publisher that provides Flux and Mono. HectorNet is the server for our NIO application used by, for developing high scalable server. Benefits. Uh, benefits of WebFlux is non-blocking, which generates a certain performance, performance gain. Uh, fewer threads, less use in memory and spent. Follow the principles of the reactive manifest, responsive, resilient, elastic, and message driving applications. Problems, a different form of program, declarative, pro pro uh, uh, declarative programming. And here we have some examples of use. This is a PoXML file, the, for this example. And here we have some dependence. The first is a Spring Boot Starter Data R2DC, that is a Spring Data for reactive applications. And Spring Boot Starter Web Flux, that is the Web Flux, uh, the verse, reactive version for our Spring Starter Web. A2 database, NIO, R2DC, A2 database, that is a reactive version of A2 database. And the and, and points you can just change in reactive controllers using the flex and mono. If you have a list of items, you use flex. And if you have just one item, like and post on the let by ID or find by ID method, you use mono. Other example of dependence is the Spring Boot starter data MongoDB reactive. That is the reactive driver of MongoDB. And we also have the Spring Doc and OpenMPI WebFlux UI, that is a OpenMPI or Swagger uh, a version of WebFlux. Um, at model, you don't have so many changes, you just pass the name of the collection in case of MongoDB. And in the repository class, just change the zoom, you just extend the reactive MongoDB repository. These examples is all on my GitHub that I don't have this on my computer now. And um, uh, in the point of a string, string uh, another form of media type. And we also have JSON and we have the media type test event string value. And we have a list of data. And here we have a public flux of speakers that lists our speakers in another format without the JSON if a text event string value. And these are some references that I use in for the presentation. And that's all. Thanks. Thank you, Camila. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, if does anyone in, in, in the audience has a question for Camila, you can unmute and ask yourself. So you can type in the chat and I can read it for Camila. If you want, we had uh, in the chat, Yuri has shared a website that you can use to, to play around with events on the, on the screen, interactivity. So you guys can have a look. And um, yeah, any questions? Do you, uh, would you mind just going back to the last example you, you had up there? This example. Um, the example? That one there, yeah. So if, if in my database I have a significant number of speakers, uh, would, uh, it, would this be enough to basically allow me to start returning the first handful of speakers while still continuing to fetch more from, from the database? Is that, uh, is that sort of the idea? Uh, if I have men, number of speakers, I think. And there's another format make this request. I um, think I JSON is <laughs> a better form. And maybe use pagination for divide the results and not to retrieve all the speakers. Because even in WebFlex, you can have some memory users in the case. We have some latency on your systems and pagination, I think, is a better solution for this. 
Nice. Uh, let me see, I think we have a question, Camila, in the chat. Camila, you mentioned you had an example on your GitHub. Would you mind sharing, sharing the link? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I will share my profile. And we have many repositories about Webflux on my profile for other presentations and my studies also. We'll share the link on the chat. Yes, please. Okay, okay, I can see it in the chat now, the repository. Uh, let's see, I think we have another question. You mentioned the word backstop or back something. What does this refer to, Camila? Oh, back pressure. Back pressure, the respond of some pressure for the system and when the subscriber receives many requests, then the publisher sends many requests and the subscriber can process all the information. So the back pressure is a, a, a form to control the requests and don't send your application have some error of performance and processing this data. Back pressure is a form to control your receiving the, uh, the correct form and correct number of requests that you can process off some time. Okay. Any more questions you want to ask away, type in the chat, no? Um, yeah, nothing more in the chat. So Camila, I think that we don't have more questions. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Any more um, information? Um, I am so thanks for the invite for present here. And, and you can add on my social networks and see my examples of another presentation, my slides on speaker deck and talk to me on social networks to learn about reactive programming and other talks from Java. And I all the time talk about Java. Nice, I and think thanks. that Claudius, sorry, sorry, Camille. I think that Claudius, go away. I want to ask a question. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's. I think we can, uh, I was going to ask, do you have any um, experiences in integrating Vertex with Rx Java? Have you or, or Rx framework, the Vertex framework? Rx Java and ReactiveX frameworks. I just study. I don't use any in the work. Okay. I just use the Spring Web Flux and Project Reactor from the ReactiveX initiative or project. I just use ReactJS in a TypeScript that is very similar with Rx Java, but in TypeScript in some texts. And, and it's also simple. I think in TypeScript is very simple to use. I don't know in Arc Java is too simple also. Okay. Uh, I think another question, I'm not sure if you understand it, is from Paul Groove. The question is, will Project Loom mean of the need of reactive frameworks? Mm, I don't know about Project Loom. I never hear about. I will search for this and try to make a presentation with this topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that Paul himself shared a, a link here in the, oh. in the chat. Um, another question, when would not use Rx over blocking? Uh, I, don't know. I don't know if I understand the question. We have some operators in Rx Java and Reactive Strings. One of these is the block. Um, I never use the block operator in my work or, or studies because it's uh, non-blocking. So use the block operator, I think it's not so too useful. Okay, another question. When would you not use Reactive Java? 
I think in simple projects, uh, Reactive Java is for very scalable projects, I think. If you use it in personal projects to, for studies, okay, you want to learn this technology, but if you want to implement your, uh, your company, you will need to think it's okay to learn about a new technology, a new paradigm, another frameworks, uh, Spring Web Flux, Reactor, and others. And you have to study if it's very and really necessary to use the Spring Web Flux if you have many requests, if you have many orange of requests, some social networks and the streaming services like Netflix that use the Web Flux and development some things of to use. Spring Web Flux and React Java. Also, it's a, the very famous case of reactive programming, I think, is Netflix. Mm, nice. Okay, thank you. And let me see if there is another question. Will it be expensive to have a reactive solution since it's a continuous connection? About expensive, I think no. Uh, you have to consider all the architecture of the database and the farm is uh, your application is deployed, but I think it's not too expensive to, to maintain a reactive solution. Mm, right. Okay. Yeah, I think he meant in terms of paying to cloud providers. Uh, not my work. I use the, the, the AWS. I don't have about information about cost <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh -huh. But I think it's the same, the same cost, basically mm -hmm. in a reactive application and another solution. Is that an option like an open source or, or it has to be paid? Is that a way for you maybe to use it? I don't know. Um, with cloud providers, I think is and also the same, the same thing of another Spring uh, versions. Okay. But how the reactive libraries are open source and free. Okay, thank you. Okay, no questions more, no more questions in the chat, no raising hands. So let me see, no more because if anyone has doesn't have any questions anymore. Camila, I can only thank you. It was very good thank having you here. Thank you for giving uh, presenting this for the community. It's always good to hear about. Ah, there is another raise <laughs> range. Claudius, you go again. Go ahead. Ah, just claps, claps. Okay, <laughs> claps for you, Camila. Thank you Thanks. very much. It was really, I will really send nice. The, I will send the presentation on the organization after. Okay, great. Because if you do it, then Barry can share we have everybody in the community. People are saying thank you okay. in the chat. Thank you very much. It was nice for you for sharing this, this knowledge with us. It's always good learning with each other. And thank you very much for the audience, for everybody here, listening to Camila, asking questions, participating. Very good. Thank you, everyone. And I think that's all for today. Have a good, a good evening. Good evening. Bye-bye.